it's me, John Dart Zone. I'm the CEO of Dart Zone. I sound exactly like the intern from Hasbro. And this is our conference couch that looks exactly like the conference couch at Hasbro. Yes, sir, re Bob. And I am Dart Has John. <laughs> I am involved with Dart Zone too. Basically, the intern here. Uh, what did you bring me in here for, supervisor? Well, you see, there's this big issue where uh, this is Nerf's new blaster. Uh, it's literally the same thing they came out with a few years ago, except it's worse in every single way. And I'm really starting to get sick of them doing this. Yeah. Your point is, I mean, we can't exactly copyright that design or anything. We can't stop Hasbro from doing what they're doing. No, I mean, since they aren't doing it, we should just do it ourselves. We should make a new blaster that's going to set a standard far above anything anyone will ever reach. A standard that still will not be matched by Hasbro in multiple years. Oh, I see what you're doing. Ugh. This is the Nexus Pro, and to say that this blaster was a big deal when it came out would be a hideous understatement. This thing still is a big deal to this very day, because this thing started a revolution in the nerfing hobby. Now you're probably asking how that could have possibly happened. Oh, don't you worry, I will go into all the details later. But for right now, let's just get started with the design. This blaster looks interesting. It looks like a realistic gun, but it doesn't match any sort of realistic gun I've ever seen before. It's like it's it's like the same thing they did in Jack and Daxter 2, where they basically made a new type of gun that looks like it could be realistic, but still is imaginary. Generally though, I dig this design. Even though I'm not really one for super realistic looking guns, I think part of this hobby making it so fun is the fact that the blasters look absolutely ridiculous but still are functional. But I'll give this one a pass. They nailed this design really, really well. Going over to the ergonomics, this grip is pretty good. It's very big and it's very filleted and smooth with this sort of kind of greebling pattern on the front to give you an extra grip on the front of it specifically, which is a little bit confusing because they could have done that all the way around. It just makes this part feel a little bit odd, but whatever, I'm not going to complain. It is a pretty nice grip. The same thing goes with the foregrip, although I like the foregrip a little bit more because it has this built-in finger choil thing right here. Now, here come my problems with this blaster. Problem number one, the stock. It is very, very short, however, it is adjustable, right? No, do not adjust this stock, because if you try to use it in the extended position, when you go to prime, it will just collapse, and that is painful. It hurts when it collapses. They created this sort of buffer tube stock thing that's supposed to be adjustable, but they didn't come up with a robust enough mechanism to handle the intense prime. Oh yeah, let's talk about the prime as well, even though I will say the stock is pretty comfortable, even though, God, my shoulder hurts now, that was painful. The Prime sucks. It really does. This blaster shoots very, very hard. It shoots like a modified blaster. However, the first half of the Prime does nothing. I, I don't understand why they made the Prime this long if half of it doesn't do anything, but then you have to Prime 150 FPS worth of power in two inches. And it is rough on your hand, especially after a long game. It obviously doesn't have any air restrictors because it's shooting full length darts and half length darts, but what am I saying there? I just really don't like the prime or the stock and putting them both together, it's a recipe for disaster. There is one thing that I do like about the stock though, and that is this right here. Those are O-rings right there and on the other side. O-rings built into the stock. In case the O-ring on this blaster wears out, you can replace the O-rings without having to buy any new ones. Thank you, Dart Zone. Thank you very much. I really like that feature. I really do. If we go down to the triggers, trigger feels pretty good. Trigger pull is pretty nice. I wouldn't say it's my favorite trigger, but it definitely works. And this mag release is really good. You can move your middle finger forwards to hit it or get it with your thumb while indexing the magazine down. I don't know why I said indexing, but ejecting the magazine. So pretty good on the triggers. So if you guys aren't up to speed yet, you're probably looking at this, you're saying, where's all the revolutionary stuff that you talked about? Why is it such a big deal? And why should I spend $50 on this thing? Is it because it hits 150 FPS? Maybe. Is it because it has a, uh, an aluminum barrel in there that actually functions like a real barrel? Maybe. But no to both of those questions. In my eyes, it's because of an attachment it comes with. That thing. Now I'm sure all of you are dying to know what this does, but don't worry, we'll get to that in a second. So you pull this down, 
you take your magazine, you shove it in, and then you shoot. It is not compatible with all magazines, which really sucks! Come on, Dark Zone! Stupid! But I'm not gonna complain about that too much, because a lot of people are already irritated with this problem. Let me show you what this is. Full length darts. You put in the, the thing with the stick. Half length darts. No modifications at all. Nothing. You put that in, you have a half-length dart shooter stock. I genuinely don't think anybody was ready for this when it happened, and it just happened. Like, I don't even think there was an announcement on that. They were just like, oh yeah, this thing's gonna shoot half-length darts. We're just gonna put that in as a little secret. But the best part is, you can get the half-length darts wholesale now. You don't have to go through sketchy websites and risk downloading 50 viruses just to buy one of the half-length dart packs off of strange websites on the internet. You can go into Walmart right now and get a 100 pack of the ember darts, as I like to call them, or the black and red darts that come with the Dart Zone Max Blasters. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? This is the only reason I even have half-length darts in the first place, because I'm not willing to go to those other websites and try to find other half-length darts, especially because of how ungodly expensive they are. But these are cheap, affordable, really durable, really high quality, and you can get them by waltzing into Walmart and going straight to the nerve section. Legitimately, who would have thought? But with everything that I have said so far, it's time for the firing demo. I'm going to be doing it with full lengths and half lengths to show the differences. So first starting with full length darts. Whoops. It's uh, jammed. It just shot two. <laughs> And now for the fabled half-length dart. Here you go, all gonna do. Come in, 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 in. There. God, this prime sucks. Ugh. So, the Dart Zone Nexus Pro. What do I think of this thing? Well, it is extremely revolutionary, especially for the time, but I probably wouldn't want to use this in a Nerf War for a couple issues. Issue number one, the Prime is terrible. You could see in the firing demo how much I actually struggled to deal with it. Problem number two, it's not compatible with 18 round magazines. Why isn't it compatible with 18 round magazines? This, this is basic stuff, Dart Zone. I mean, ugh. plus it doesn't have slam fire, which I use a lot more than you'd think. And those three problems combined, despite being like the only three problems I genuinely have with this blaster outside of the terrible stock, it, they're big enough problems to not warrant a use for me. I just don't like using this blaster unless it's just for plinking or messing around with my parents. Trying to use this thing practically is a nightmare. I definitely think there are people who will really enjoy this, especially if they haven't gotten to enjoy the experience of shooting a blaster that shoots 150 FPS. It is very fun to be able to shoot that hard out of something stock that you paid $50 for from Walmart. So if you do want to pick one of these things up, I will link one in the description below. With all that said, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, and comment down below what do you think of the Nexus Pro or any blasters you'd like me to review in the future, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!